first of all, we have a situation here where you are sailing over financial hardships, okay? Um, and I've been seeing this for you guys for quite some time. And I feel like, you know, you guys are actually very, usually very, very good with financial planning, with uh, saving for a rainy day, with being practical when it comes to your spending, with um, being able to take care of yourself and buy only the necessities and not splurge and not, you know, uh, spend on uh, waste money. Okay, so wastefulness is just really something that you have I feel like, you know, you've already mastered, okay? Like, uh, not to be wasteful or be mindful about, like, the your carbon footprint, the trash you emit, as well as where your resources go. So I feel like in a previous life, you've already mastered this lesson. And so you reincarnate as a Virgo because it's already been mastered. And so the next step in the evolutionary scale and the sign that is immediately after you is Libra, right? And Libras, they can be a little bit indecisive, but they're very, very good at seeing both sides of the coin, okay? And once again, we're, we're looking at, you know, on the one hand, on the other hand, and this image is exactly what I felt um, came up when it comes to that image with the, the woman, the red hair and the brown hair. That's what it feels like to me, where you are trying to balance out both sides of yourself. You're trying to regain control when it comes to, on the one hand, I really love this location, but on the other hand, I want more. I want more adventure. On the one hand, I'm a homebody, but on the other hand, if I'm too much of a homebody, I feel myself isolated and, you know, uh, I want to rejoin that community of people. I want to have more fun. I want to make more friends. I want to form more lasting relationships. And then on the, um, I, I feel like as well, on the one hand, it's like, yeah, this job is really stable. I can keep progressing. I'm going to get, you know, promoted next year. But on the other hand, does it emotionally fulfill me? So I feel like you're at a point in your life where you're weighing out all of these things within yourself and trying to find your center as well as trying to find balance. And I feel like there's this internal voice within you where you're just like, the clock is ticking. Time is running out. Some of you might be in your 30s and you're just like, I want to kind of like, you know, sow my wild oats or um, travel the world or be a globetrotter or, you know, experiment with this new job that I've always wanted to do. But I was too afraid because it wasn't stable enough. I feel like many of you, you have some some type of um, uh, talent when it comes to arts or something. And it was never the safe choice to go with because, you know, financially, let's be honest, it can be a little bit unstable. But now you're at the peak of your career or at least, you know, finances looks really, really good. We have here the nine of coins flying over your financial worries, getting over it and having a lot of financial abundance for yourself, where you can invest, where you can see it grow in the bank, where you don't have to worry about the day-to-day -day living, where you're not living paycheck to paycheck, where you have enough financial abundance. And so when you have, the, when you're in this state and you're no longer in survival mode and you're just like, what about that job that I really wanted to do? I wanted to work for, you know, start my own NGO. I wanted to uh, work on the streets as a musician or even as a fashion model or even, as, or even as a photographer or even as a street artist. But finances wasn't stable. So I, I kind of like left it on the back burner. It's gathered cobwebs in the back of my closet and I never, it, I never allowed it to grow. I never allowed myself to do f these frivolous, you know, and I'm going to air quote like frivolous. You feel that they're frivolous because they're unpredictable. But now your inner self, especially that inner child, especially that more creative side of you, is just like, that's what I really want. That's what I really, really want to pursue. That's what I really want to make my career. That's what I really want to go for. And that is what my heart is really beating for okay so it's a really beautiful energy because i feel like you're coming into this sense of awareness what your heart really desires in your in your past past 30 years past 40 years 
It was always about the practical choice, the practical partner, the practical jobs. And now it's like, I'm at a point where I don't have to think about practicality. Practicality for the past 30 or 40 years um, helped me build up that financial foundation, but my heart feels a little bit empty. And so now you're at a point where you can definitely venture out. We have the fool. This is you venturing out, getting a new start for yourself, making a life for yourself, doing whatever it is that really internally your instinct is really drawn to. There isn't a rhyme or a reason for it. You're just drawn to it. You just want to do it. And now you're at a point where, you know, you definitely can afford to do it. And you don't have to think of things in terms of financial stability or even um, practicality. You're at a point where you can take that new path and sort of like shirk responsibility and do something brand new. And I feel as well, there's still, you know, this, this inner conflict that you're trying to work out. On the one hand, it's like this. Many of you have, you know, built up possibly a career. You have, you know, you're, you're like a major player in your field. You're somebody who's well regarded. You're in a career track, a regular nine to five job where there's guaranteed promotions. Okay. Because that's the way that Virgos function. And um, you have an, a, a job here that is that you you like. I feel like you like it because you're holding on to it, okay? And like you're hugging it, like you're you're still smitten by it. It still brings you joy and contentment. So this is like the homebody. This is the safe choice. But on the flip side of that, we have as well the King of Wands, and this is like the 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 passion. This is the romanticism. This is someone who's very spirited, someone who's adventurous, someone who wants to do something new. But keep in mind, this is a king. This is not a page. This is not a knight. This is somebody who's well-planned, methodical, knows what he or she wants. And they're kind of like the torchbearer, okay? So this is someone one who's, who, who, who is, who has leadership qualities, who trailblazes, who inspires others. And I feel like you're kind of, these are the two sides of yourself that you're kind of fighting. Egg out a new path for yourself, edge out a new path for yourself, create a new path for yourself, or stay and, and just kind of grow with the status quo. Okay, I, I um, remember the last image. So I see this maze, okay? It's like a corn maze or like a hedge maze that you see in a lot of Victorian houses. And in the middle is um, it's a tower and it has like a red flag on it. And then I see two people on um, either side on the outside perimeter of this maze. And so they kind of like walk their way in and then they, they try to, you know, um, find their way. And so when I'm looking at it, I'm getting like a bird's eye view. I know which path is a dead end and I know which path is going to lead you to the center of the maze. So where you can get the flag and beat the other person. So whoever gets to the center first gets the flag is the winner pretty much. And so from our perspective or my perspective, at least I, I have that bird's eye view. I know who's going to, you know, be quicker at it. And so the person on the left had a really good start, like head start. They're like egging their way in. And then along the way, they took a little detour. And then the other person had a slower start, but it's a little bit more methodical. And it's just like kind of drawing it out or mapping out the maze in, in their head, what they think it looks like so that they're not constantly backtracking. So they're systematic. And I feel like that is you because you're so systematic and because you're so like, I want to say obsessively scared about making mistakes that every step you take you map it out okay I, I made a right here I walk straight here and there's a dead end so I'm going to draw an x here because that's a dead end so I'm going to backtrack a little bit and then I'm going to make a left here instead because last time I made a right blah 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 and then that person on the right ends up getting to the center, grabs the flag, and the scene just kind of cuts out. And I feel like that's what's happening here. There's a lot of fear 
about making a mistake, about is the timing right? Can I do this right now or should I wait a few more years? And I feel like what it's really telling you, what the universe is really wanting to tell you is there isn't a right or a wrong. Every step that we take, no matter how calculating we are, no matter how how methodical we are in the planning process, um, life is not really life unless there are snags in the road, unless there are obstacles, unless there are things kind of like laid on our path. Because when it comes to life in general, uh, adversity builds character, right? And I know you appreciate that because... I feel like a lot of Virgo and people, childhood was filled with a lot of adversity. You were forced to grow up really, really fast. And even when you were like four or five, six years old, you were a lot more mature than your peers. You were a lot more responsible than your siblings. And by virtue of these, you know, really good characteristics within you, um, I feel like the adults in your life place a lot more responsibilities on you. And when responsibilities are placed at such a young age on a person, doesn't matter who they are, um, they're the, the child grows up very, very fearful about making mistakes. And I feel like that's, um, that's a situation that might stem from, you know, the upbringing. And I feel like, you know, mom and dad or whoever the adult was in your environment, they just saw you and they're just like, the Virgo is responsible. Let's have them babysit or, you know, let's have them cook. Let's have, you know, like it, they, they, they didn't do it to be mean, to dampen your spirit or to, um, purposely make you fearful of responsibilities or make you fearful of making mistakes. I feel like they saw something in you and they're just like, let's enhance it. So in their eyes, it's like character development, but in your eyes, it's like, that's not fair right? So what I'm getting here is we have to kind of like shed that old layer of skin and we have to allow both sides of our calling, our head and our heart to really be in harmony and in sync and, and kind of like know your strengths, know your weaknesses and to also know that whatever it is that your heart desires that's where you're supposed to go next. That's where the universe is opening up opportunities for you. So we cannot sit here in this comfortable, safe, and very beautiful home, clinging on to these, you know, earthly possessions, or even clinging on to something that we feel is really safe, is really stable, when your heart wants to explore and wants to try something new and when new paths and new doors are opening left and right for you with this full card, okay? We have to let some things go. And in the process of letting go, I, I feel like this is not so much about love and, and relationships, the three of swords. This is more about the inner need to cling on, you know, clinging on, holding something onto something very, very tightly, refusing to let it go, even though it doesn't really serve its purpose anymore. Clinging on to a situation, refusing to let things go, even though it's already there, you're in a safe environment, you're no longer in survival mode, you don't have to cling on to something so tightly where it hinders your ability to move freely travel light and explore and lead and you know really enjoy the fruits of your labor okay so that's where we're at right now i have as well the strength card and the strength card this is a very gentle card the way that it's coming in and there's a lot of imagery here with leo energy so some of you might be on the cusp between leo um late august early degree, uh, uh, like early days of September. So you might be on the cusp, okay? Where you're just like fighting these sides of yourself. The On the one hand, it's like wanting to explore. On the other hand, it's like being fearful. So this is like the, the woman and the beast, okay? No one is afraid of each other. This is a very gentle card that indicates trust, that indicates harmony, that indicates just because we're different, we don't have to argue. Just because we don't agree, we can agree to disagree. Just because you have these two sides of yourself, it doesn't mean that you have to be so 
constantly in conflict with yourself. The two sides, the two opposing energies can be balanced out as indicated here with the temperance card. It's just a matter of having self-mastery. This is the magician. Mastering all the elements, mastering the emotions as well as the heart, as well as the head. Mastering the spiritual realm as well so that you're not constantly in conflict with yourself. And mastering yourself in a way where you realize, I've done everything to the best of my capabilities. Now I can kind of like, you know, kick up my feet, have a martini and have some fun and not feel guilty about it even. So letting the two sides of yourself work in harmony with each other. Because once you're able to do that, Virgos, once you are able to overcome that internal conflict within yourself, that's when you can move mountains. Because I feel like you guys are such a, like a, a fireball, but you don't realize that, that you have that drive. You definitely have the ambition, the hard work, the perseverance. But I feel like a lot of the times you don't realize how much of a fireball that you are. How much drive and ambition you have to get things done. You can work tirelessly into the night perfecting a project to make like to 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 give something to the world or to bring something uh, forward that is like pure perfection. So if you have the ability and if you know that you're capable of like, you know, burning the midnight oil, uh, working tirelessly without complaining to create something and make something perfect, then what's really stopping you from moving mountains? What's really stopping you from being able to get out into the world and just say, I'm going to do this because even though it's not stable, but I know myself well enough to know that whatever I touch is going to turn gold because I'm just that good and I'm just that I want to say dedicated and I persevere. So even if like, like it's like failure is not really an option, but I feel like you're not aware of how powerful you can be. And so you kind of, you know, uh, stop yourself before you pursue something because you're just like, uh, I don't really know if it's going to take off, but you should know from all your previous experiences that when you set your mind to something, Nothing really flounder, right? You've never hit dead ends. You persevere, persevere, you blast through it. And things have always been amazing. You, you produce really good work. You bring forth really good ideas. And you, whatever you submit or whatever you create, it has always been very, you know, it's like sheer perfection. You know that about yourself, but you don't trust that about yourself. And so what I'm seeing here is, we have to overcome the, the internal conflict within ourselves for sure. But we're at a point where we are no longer in survival mode. We're at a point where your self-esteem is in, incredibly enhanced recently. So I don't know what happened. But you're at a point, you might have been, you know, on center stage. You might have received a lot of positive reception. You might have been at a point where, you know, you graduated, you have a really well-paying job, and you're finally feeling like, hey, I'm in a career that I really deserve. It pays really well. I like my job. And I feel, for many of you, that was a huge self-esteem boost. And we have more ways to go. This is not the end. This is like the beginning so whereas you feel I'm at a point where I make a lot of money and, you know, I can kind of like kick up my feet and just kind of enjoy it like, like a temporary stop. I can stay here and bask in it for a little bit longer. But I feel like the universe is just like, no, Virgos, you need to keep going. This is just the beginning. You're meant for a lot more. You're not meant to just create the pentacles. You're meant to, I feel, let it grow for you. And what we have as well is a lot of travel, a lot of movement with the two of wands. This is, you know, the, the invisible hand working behind the scenes to move mountains, okay? Moving a whole globe. And so it indicates to me a lot of travel and movement as well as the eight of wands, which is also fast, swift, like 
sonic speed. Okay, this is like moving and communicating and being able to not only, I feel like not bound by your geographical location, expanding your craft, expanding your work, connecting with people from all walks of life, from all parts of the world, uh, time difference, night and day, night and day, as well as traveling and working in different time zones, connecting to people from all corners of the globe. So I feel like you're meant for a lot more. You're meant for self-employment. You're meant to bring these disparate forces and people and different cultures and, you know, different ways of doing together into like one blended melting pot. That's what it feels like to me. And so there's some really powerful stuff happening behind the scenes. Um, I feel like there's going to be a lot of messages, a lot of last minute travel that you might need to do. So, you know, keep your, your clothes clean because I feel like, and, and the reason I say that is because I hate doing laundry. And when I have to travel, I have to like stay up really late to do laundry. And I feel many of you feel the same way. And so, you know, have some basic, um, like go to, uh, clothing items on the ready. Um, so, so that you can, you know, pick up and go at, at a moment's notice because I feel like there are important engagements, important talks, important conversations, important agendas that people are lining up for you right now behind the scenes. And you might not get uh, catch wind of that until, you know, when like the week before it happens, the night before, the day before. And you kind of have to be like on the fly. You have to just, you know, roll with the punches and you have to be here, there, everywhere at a last moment's notice. And I feel like is really going to break you out of your shell. It's really going to make you feel like, you know, all the past 20, 30, 40 years, I've been planning every little detail. I planned everything down to the T. And now I have to do things on the fly, but it's so liberating. It's so freeing. It makes you realize that you don't have to obsessively plan and control every single detail, that things will be fine. I feel like for some of you, um, it's sort of like this. So you're um, you're you're going to see a friend, right? You don't have you you haven't really talked to your friend. You don't know where they're living. You, you know what city they're in. You don't know their living situation, and so you might you know kind of like um, tell them like, "Hey, I'm going to be in town. Uh, where are you living?" And they're like, "Well, I'm living in a hostel," you know. And in the past, you might have been like, oh, no, that's um, I don't know about the bathroom situation. I don't know where I'm going to sleep. Do I need to bring a sleeping bag? Do I need to bring a towel? Do I need to, you know, all of these logistical things. And now you're just like, what's the worst that can happen? I'll go visit my friend. If it doesn't work out, if there's no place for me to sleep, then I'll just rent a hotel room. You're at that point where you don't have to worry about the financial resources. But also you're at that point where you're just like, if it doesn't work out, then I'll go with another plan. Then I'll do something else. It's not the end of the world. I don't have to plan every single detail. And so I see you a lot more willing to kind of like break out of your shell and your comfort zone and a lot more willing to roll with the punches, okay? Take risk and enjoy the fruitful rewards as well because there will be a lot of rewards coming in. Um, I see a lot of relationship things here. So first of all, there is a fire sign that we're dealing with, in particular, a uh, Aries and Leo, okay? Leo person and an Aries person. So the Leo person, they uh, have a lot of plans, a lot of projects that they're getting off the ground. They're very enthusiastic. Uh, 